Hello everyone. This is Gokul from Simply Learn and I welcome you all to this interesting session on introduction to SQL. Learning SQL isn't an uphill task because unlike other programming languages, SQL is quite simple and uses common English words in its usage. Even a non-technical professional with no prior experience in programming can easily learn and understand it. According to a survey by Stack Overflow in 2020, SQL ranked as the third most used programming language. Also, every 9 out of 10 companies in the world uses SQL. Isn't that interesting? Well, before we get started, if you're new to the channel and want to learn more about latest technologies, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let us dive straight into today's topic on introduction to SQL. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start this tutorial by understanding what a database is and look at some popular databases. Next, we'll understand the need for databases. After that, we'll look at the evolution of SQL and how it grew over the years. Then, we'll discuss what exactly is SQL, followed by some of its unique features. Next, we'll go through the working of SQL, types of SQL commands. Towards the end, we'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of SQL. And finally, we'll see some applications of SQL in real life. What is a database? Data in today's world plays a vital role in our everyday lives. Be it your work-related data in your laptop, your bank account details, or even your Gmail password. So it's necessary to store this data safely and in an organized way. That's where database comes into picture, which holds and manages the data. A database can be defined as a collection of information or processed data that can be stored and accessed whenever needed. For example, we can use a database to store the complete details of an employee working in an organization. The primary goal of a database is to store and retrieve information efficiently. Popular databases. Some popular open source and commercially available databases are MySQL, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Server, MongoDB, and PostgreSQL. why we need a database now that we have understood what a database is let's understand the use of database and the need for it database came into existence in the early 1970s but all the data was stored in computer files before that as the technology kept advancing it became difficult for computers to handle when the number of files increased and the volume of data grew the so called traditional file system was no longer able to store and retrieve data efficiently Let us now see some of the limitations and drawbacks caused by traditional file system. Data redundancy and inconsistency. Redundancy means when the same data is getting duplicated and repeated in different locations. This leads to excess and unwanted storage which eventually results in inconsistency where the data in separate files do not match with each other. Data isolation. Data is isolated because uh, it is scattered in various files in different locations and the files may be in different formats as well. At any point, writing new application programs to retrieve the appropriate data becomes difficult as the files are separated from each other. Limited data access. File storage systems usually do not have access for multiple users. This means multiple users at different places cannot access the data simultaneously. It becomes difficult to access important data if multiple users are searching at the same time security and integrity issues data stored in files can easily be accessed and tampered so it's essential to prevent unauthorized users access to hold the data's integrity in order to eliminate all these drawbacks we use a database that is controlled by a database management system let us now look at the history of sql SQL was developed by IBM in the year 1970. Dr. Cord Boys and Donald Chamberlain proposed a paper on usage of relational database management. They came up with SQL which can be used to perform operations on data stored in the databases. SQL was made publicly available and was accepted for the use of relational database in the year 1974. Initially, the language was known as structured English query language pronounced as SQL. which was later changed into SQL in the year 
the American National Standard Inst Institute, ANSI, and other international organizations have standardized SQL as a language for database communication in the year 1986. Though companies use a different version of SQL nowadays, the latest version of it was released in 2019 by Microsoft. What is SQL? SQL is defined as a structured query languages. It allows the user to manage and manipulate the database. So you might have got a doubt in your head that we have discussed databases earlier and why we are discussing SQL now. Well, you got it right. Both database and SQL are interconnected to each other. SQL allows you to perform operations like insert, update, modify and delete in the database. In a nutshell, SQL is used to communicate with the database systems to retrieve the information. Features of SQL SQL is one of the most demanding skills nowadays. With the ever increasing amount of data, SQL serves as a powerful tool to provide insights to businesses while handling databases. SQL is used to define the overall schema, that is, the complete structure of the database by managing and manipulating the data accordingly and retrieving the information whenever required by the user. SQL also allows flexibility as it uses simple English words in its queries like create, delete, etc. SQL can handle large amounts of records stored in databases with utmost efficiency. Let us now see how SQL works. A typical SQL database engine includes a storage engine which is a database server and a query processor within the SQL engine. To understand simply, let us take an example. Suppose John is an HR manager working in an organization. He wants the information of all the employees who have joined last year. John writes an SQL query in his laptop to retrieve the data. In order to execute the query, it must interact with relational database management system within the database server. And the request should be a valid query before the SQL engine can process it. The SQL engine then writes to and retrieves data from the database server. Both database server and SQL engine work hand in hand together to process the required data. The system processes the SQL request and sends it to web server to access the information via SQL database. And if the information is found in the tables, the database server sends the information back to the user. In this way, John can retrieve the information from the database using SQL. Types of SQL commands. SQL commands give instructions to database to perform specific actions to retrieve the data. SQL commands are broadly classified into four types. The first one is data definition language or DDL. DDL allows the user to define the table and change its overall structure. Commands that are used in DDL are create. It is used to create a new table. Alter. It is used to modify the existing table by adding unique attributes. Drop. It is used to delete the whole table and the data stored in it. Truncate. It is used to delete the rows in a table. The next one is data manipulation language or DML. DML is used to access and manipulate data in tables. Commands that are used in DML are Select. It is used to extract data from the tables. Update. It is used to update a value in the existing table. Delete. Unlike the drop command, the delete command is used to delete a specific row in the table. Insert. It is used to insert a new value into the table. The next one is data control language or DCL. DCL is responsible for maintaining the security which gives control access and permissions to the database. Commands that come under DCL are grant. It is used to grant permission to user to access the database. Revoke. It is used to cancel or take back the earlier granted permission. The last one is transaction control language or TCL. TCL has three commands namely commit. It is used to permanently save the transaction. Rollback. It is used to restore the transaction that is not saved. Save point. It is used to hold a transaction temporarily. It can be rolled back to its previous state at any point. Let us now look at some of the advantages of SQL. One of the main advantage of SQL is that it provides access to data stored in database with its high speed and faster query processing 
quickly and efficiently. SQL is open source. That means it is publicly available and can be accessed from the internet. It is also straightforward to implement as well. SQL also provides the user to have multiple views of their content stored in the database. SQL is efficient in retrieving vast amount of data using simple queries. And also it is portable as well, which means you can perform all these operations at your home or your workplace through your laptops and PCs. Disadvantages of SQL There are two sides to every coin and similarly SQL also has few advantages which are not that significant. Initially, one may find it challenging to work with SQL due to its complex interface. Since it's a platform-based languages, most of the commercially available SQL servers costs are relatively higher. SQL is constantly working on these massive amounts of data stored in the databases and hence maintenance costs are also high as well. Let us now look at some of the applications in real life of SQL. SQL is widely used in various sectors nowadays. Some of them are education. Schools and universities use SQL and databases to store and retrieve information about their students, faculty and staff. Healthcare. Hospitals and other medical centers use SQL to store the details of the patients without any hassle. It also helps in maintaining all their documents and bills as well. Retail and e-commerce. With its vast presence in the market, retail and e-commerce companies store their customers' data to improve their shopping experiences by providing special offers which will in turn help their businesses to grow. Banking. SQL is one of the significant components of banking sector as well. Banks store the account details of customers and the transactions done on a day-to-day -day basis in the database. Finance. Finance is another massive area where SQL queries are used regularly in managing the assets, revenue details, shares of the companies, etc. Faster execution and retrieval of data are key for all the businesses to make strategies and derive insights from it. Companies using SQL. SQL is used extensively every day by some big tech giant companies like Google, Microsoft, Oracle, Amazon, Facebook, etc. Even small companies and startups heavily rely on SQL to make better decisions and provide solutions and service to customers. With that, we have come to the end of this session on introduction to SQL. By now, you must have got some idea of what SQL is. Over the years, SQL has evolved and is widely used nowadays worldwide. It is one of the most efficient database languages out there. It can perform various operations on the database to retrieve the data instantly. SQL is very simple to understand and easy to learn as well as all the commands and queries are written using English words. Unlike other programming languages, SQL requires almost no coding. It does not require thousands of lines of code. The syntax is also user friendly and easy to implement. That's all from us. If you found this video helpful, please leave us a like and feel free to drop your queries in the comment section below. Please subscribe to our Simply Code channel for more interesting tech videos like this. Until next time, thank you and keep learning.